This week in math, we've been working with subtracting across zeros. So I wanted to put this video up really quick just to show you the strategies we've been using in class that you could use on your homework tonight for subtracting across zeros in case you get home and you forget what we did. So when we're subtracting against zeros, the challenging part about doing this is the regrouping and the borrowing. So looking at this number, 70,000 minus 6,725, you can't borrow, but you need to borrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to borrow from the first number that we can borrow from, which is the 7, we're going to turn it into a 6. And then once we do that, we're going to start borrowing across the problem, going left to right. So we're going to make this a 10, cross it off, make it a 9. We're going to make this a 10, cross it off, make it a 9. We're going to make this a 10, cross it off, make it a 9. And then finally we get to the ones column and we're going to put in a 10. There's nowhere else to, to go, so we leave the 10 there. And now we can start working out our problem. So we're going to do 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 7 is 2. 9 minus 6 is 3. And then we're just going to bring down our other 6. So our answer for this problem would be 63,275. The other way we looked at these problems today in class, I'm going to set this down, I'm sorry. The other way we looked at this in class today was we also looked at problems where we had to subtract across zeros, but somewhere in the number there was a number where we either had to borrow or didn't have to borrow. So I'm going to change my number 70,000 this time to 70,005, and I'm going to subtract from that 8,927, just like that, okay? Now, again, on this one I have to borrow, so in which case then, I'm gonna follow the same pattern, borrowing from the, the highest number I can, or the first number I can borrow from, crossing them off and making them tens. However, I'm gonna change this just for the sake of showing you something different. I'm gonna make an eight. So what happens then when you don't have to borrow and you have zeros in between? So then at that point, what you're going to do is you're going to use the same strategy as you're going to start off, you're going to borrow, but as you go across, you're just going to stop sooner. So that would be a 10 after you borrow. It's a 9. That becomes a 10. It's a 9. And then that becomes a 10. Since you can do this without borrowing, now you can go ahead and work it out. You can also do this as you go along, but... Today, as we were working on class, I felt a lot of you were really comfortable with setting up the problem first and then working it out. So now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and subtract. So I have 8 minus 7 is 1. 10 minus 2 is 8. 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 minus 8 is 1. And that's a 6. So your final answer for this one would be 67,081. And again, at the end, you don't have to borrow.